have to say the ladies are looking absolutely beautiful. We have 51 gorgeous contestants competing tonight. Let's crown ourselves a new Miss USA. The first runner-up is, runner is Ariana Lemus. Congratulations, Nebraska! Taylor Hale, you are Miss Michigan USA 2021. I was never a girl that grew up watching pageants and wanting to participate in one. It was just something that I would very casually catch on TV. Oh, Miss Universe is on, Miss USA is on. Listen, I get it. Your first thought is, please be serious. And why as a society are we giving any accolades to this? I get it. I used to be one of those people. But I think the pageant is an arena where women get to be <laughs> honestly the most feminist that they can be. I am all about marching for your body, for your rights. I think the way that you win a pageant is not by doing what the stereotype is. It is honing who you are, looking the judges in the eyes and challenging them and saying, I dare you not to choose me. That's the girl that wins. And that's the most feminist thing that you can do in my perspective. Miss USA is entering a new era of ownership. The multi-million dollar organization is now being run by a former national winner, Crystal Stewart. When I found out that Crystal was the new director of Miss USA, I was just beside myself. I mean, look, when's the last time anybody on the street has watched Miss USA? Victoria's Secret Fashion Show was more popular than Miss USA. The nation's hottest national contest is getting a reboot. A woman that's unique, that's different, that's cool, that's trendy, that can represent the United States at Miss Universe. I was just over the moon when Crystal stepped up to the plate. And when I thought she was stepping up to the plate. <laughs> Ugly allegations at one of the premier beauty pageants. Favoritism, conflicts of interest, and cheating. We all are just looking for honesty. Pageant world has been rocked. I don't think any company would willingly want to broadcast the scandals that we've seen even in the past year. The alleged knowledge of a sexual predator within the company. Miss Universe is at a certain inflection point. Are we past this whole thing mm -hmm. as a society? It's losing its relevance and its audience quickly. It has to change. That's not gonna happen until it gets shaken up. Leaving the future of the pageant in doubt. We have a right to feel like we had a fair shot. I would start this story at the finale at Miss USA. I'm sitting there in the audience. And you know, the finale always follows the same beats. The two finalists are holding each other's hands. They're looking at each other. A winner gets called, and then the girls come and rush in, and they're hugging her, and it's like this beautiful moment. But that didn't happen at Miss USA 2022. Everyone noticed that as Miss Texas got the crown, the women started walking off the stage. Like, see how the other contestants seem to be leaving the stage instead of celebrating with her? What's going on? What in the world is happening at Miss USA? And then I think it was the next day that we started seeing those TikTok videos. Welcome to pageant drama TikTok. Here are the facts. We are speaking up and jeopardizing our own reputations and titles to speak out on something because that's how important this is to us. For contestants to publicly come out against the organization, that is a huge risk. Something that happened is not right. And that's when I knew there was a huge story brewing. I want to know what happened, and I'm hoping I'll get an answer. Does it matter if the pageants are rigged or not? <laughs> wow. Uh, well, does, I would guess my, if you're asking me, does it matter if beauty pageants are rigged, I'd say, does it matter to who? Because it certainly matters to the contestants in that particular pageant. And it does matter to a lot of like young people who are watching, um, who is seen as representing them. What many people don't realize is that beauty pageants has a deep link to the suffragist movement. If you've ever wondered why beauty queens wear sashes, you should look to suffragist marches in the early part of the 20th century. Miss America starts in 1921. And how do they identify those women? They're wearing sashes. 
it is a window into something that some people don't like to think about or don't like to grapple with the complications. Pageantry can tell us the history and story of American feminism and show how far we've come. Go ahead and drool. It's Miss America time. Overpowering all opposition is strapping 5 foot 10, 143 pound Miss Utah. She's the biggest girl ever to win. She likes men for their brains and says she'd even marry a midget if he were a mental giant. Step right up, Shorty. Oh my God. It could be a 4 H festival and it's for a contest for like a prized steer. He's mentioning their, their height and weight. Nearby Asbury Park holds a quest for Mrs. America. The cooking contest goes to Mrs. New York City. What everyone remembers is just the superficiality of it. It makes sense that the general conception of these pageants and the women who participate in them has nothing to do with the woman at all. <laughs> Miss USA was born out of the Miss America pageant. In the 1940s, used to be that Miss America was crowned in her bathing suit because Miss America started as a bathing beauty contest by a group of men in Atlantic City who wanted to extend the tourist season. How do you do that? You put women in bathing suits out in public. Miss America models the official Miss America suit for 1949. In 1950, Miss America, who was crowned Yolanda Betsby, came out and said after she was crowned, I'm not gonna do any appearances in a bathing suit anymore. And so Catalina, which was one of the corporate sponsors and they make swimwear, they were like, okay, well, we're gonna go start our own pageant. And they went and started Miss USA and Miss Universe as well. I'm very partial to the Miss USA, Miss Universe organization because that's what I was a part of. There's an old saying that Miss America is the girl who lives next door and Miss USA is the girl you wish lived next door. But the girls who win are smart and driven and dynamic. Hi, my name is Michelle Fiber. I live in Midway City and I represent Orange County. Thank you. So many of our journalists got their starts competing in pageants. These women were sexy and hyper-feminine, but they were also doing amazing things in the world. I was a Division I athlete. There's always this underlying comparison to male athletes. And something that I found interesting from pageants was that there was never that comparison. It really is a place where women can succeed and the focus stays on the woman. There is a sisterhood to it, and as cheesy as this sounds, you, you find your lifelong friends. I mean, I know that's what, like, is on the brochure to sell this stuff, but it's actually true. And the thing about Miss USA and Miss Universe is that it's a franchise business. So it's kind of like McDonald's if you want to think about it. There's a corporate headquarters, and then individuals can pick up a franchise. And so for all 50 states and then District of Columbia, you have to buy that franchise. The Miss Universe organization that is doing the selling is only successful because the thing that they're selling is good and the thing that they're selling is the women. I watched Marla perform so nicely last year at the Miss Universe pageant and I said, this is a great event and this could really be a great event. So I bought it. Trump owned it for a number of years. And then in 2015, he sold it to WME IMG and a few years later, that company becomes Endeavor. Endeavor took over at an interesting time. We started seeing things like the Women's March and Me Too and so many things happening in the world. Have you ever had a Me Too moment? Yes. Yes. Sadly, yes. There has been a push in the Me Too era to be like, women should be judges women should be running things. We are doing this amongst ourselves. We are not just doing this for the male gaze. So that's a really big thing. What Me Too and Time's Up are about are making sure that we foster safe and inclusive workplaces in our country. As an attorney, that's exactly what I want to hear. In 2019, we had a Black Miss USA, a Black Miss Universe, a Black Miss America, and a Black Miss Teen USA. As a black woman who was entering the pageant arena, to have black women in a position to speak, advocate, and have a face in the world of beauty where people usually don't listen to women, that felt all the more powerful.
The organization seizes upon that zeitgeist and they do incorporate it into the pageant. But viewership has been in steady decline since the 90s. And then we get to 2020, and for the first time, the organization decides to spin off Miss USA and sell it to an individual director, Crystal Stewart. A former Miss USA herself, she is now the owner. Give it up for Crystal Stewart, president of the Miss USA organization. I am the first African-American woman to have this position and the first person, period. So they've never licensed out the Miss USA pageant. The Miss Universe organization does still own Miss USA. It's just franchised it out to Crystal Stewart as a director. It was a surprise, but it also made sense to me because every other country had its own director. I thought it was interesting they gave a national directorship to a former title holder who had not even been a state director. It's been an amazing opportunity. I think it's monumental and I'm very excited about the things to come. When Crystal took over, she really filled out that team with the people who were closest to her. Her husband, Max, became vice president of Miss USA. The chaperones and the makeup artists, like these seem to be like Texas people. Pageantry Reimagined was her slogan, and I think the intentions were amazing, and the rebrand definitely needed to happen. She wants to put her own stamp on it, and there's a big expectation there. So I can see where that is what she wanted to do. I just don't think that's what happened. This Alabama, USA is Joseph Kaylin USA is one of the only countries where you have to win a regional title just to walk on the Miss USA stage. Welcome to the sisterhood. After I was crowned Miss DC USA, the first correspondence that I had with the Miss USA staff was a Zoom call that was in preparation for the retreat for all of the title holders in Cancun. Nizuk is a resort in Cancun, and it's a national sponsor of Miss USA. There was a retreat there a couple months before the competition. And the main purpose was to take our official headshots for Miss USA. But two girls were missing from that retreat. It was Miss Colorado and Miss Texas because they hadn't been crowned in their state pageants yet. Arbany is from Texas, which, by the way, is where the Miss USA director, Crystal Stewart, is from. And Miss USA is based in Houston. And Crystal, before Arbany, was the last person from Texas to win the Miss USA crown. The first time that I heard about Arbany being preferred over any other contestants was the day that she was crowned Miss Texas USA. Her final question was posted on the official Miss USA main feed page. As a woman, I believe it's our right to make a decision. It's a personal choice. Up until that point, no other contestant had been posted on the Miss USA page. When I really started to think that something was happening out of the ordinary was when I found out that the state directors had a meeting with the national office about the treatment that Arbany was getting, how the Miss USA staff already openly has a favorite. Live from the Grand Sierra Resort in Reno Tahoe, Nevada, the 2022 Miss USA preliminary competition. Talk me through where it starts to get weird. First of all, it's in Reno. That's where it gets weird. Nobody wants to go to Reno. I was asked to be a judge for the 2022 pageant. And I was never asked to sign a no conflict contract. Usually the judges are given a list of contestants and they say, I don't know any of these contestants. And if I do know these contestants, do I believe I can be impartial? Yes or no, and you sign your name. I was never asked for that. 
The first contestant moving on tonight is District of Columbia. My whole family came and they were telling me, so-and-so said, oh, you know, apparently it's gonna go to Texas. All right, next up, we've got Texas. I remember saying, everyone seems to really like her in the staff, but I don't know if they would crown her because the directors are gonna riot. May I have the results, please? In second place, North Carolina. Miss USA is Texas! There were 51 women who competed at Miss USA, and the vast majority felt very strongly that some fishy things went on in the pageant. All we're told is, oh yeah, this person won. Take our word for it, we have to trust you, but the organization had proved a strong lack of trust. After the pageant's over, everyone is leaving and going back to their respective homes. I was on the plane, and I get a text from one of my friends saying, are you seeing this? And I'm like, seeing what? That is when things really blew up. The main thing that was drawing concern was a social media post posted by the Cancun hotel sponsor. Inside Nazook is the Mia Butte Spa, which is also a national sponsor of Miss USA. The video is the classic promo video. And when it was posted on the Instagram page, it was congrats to the new Miss USA. The contestants were extremely confused because she hadn't been at the retreat. So it was obvious she had gone on her own at some point to film the promo video. It made it look like it was planned. Whether it was or not, that is what the optics looked like. It sort of rubs a lot of the girls the wrong way. Like, why does she get this opportunity to spend one-on-one -on -one time with a sponsor? This sponsor, Mia, they are a Miss Texas USA sponsor. They invited me to be a brand ambassador for their new spa at Nazook Resort. So I flew myself out, shot the video, and that was released after I won Miss USA. It's not that big a deal on its own, but in a competition where any edge you can get could affect your chances, it starts to be a bigger deal. Arbany had been a customer at the spa before she won Miss Texas. There's actually pictures of her on the spa's social media pages dating back as early as 2021. The spa was founded by Dr. Fee Nguyen, and she's got photos with Dr. Nguyen. The reason this is important is because Dr. Nguyen was one of the judges of the state costume competition the night before the Miss USA final. Founder and owner of Mia Beauty, Dr. Fee Nguyen. And the winner of that costume competition was Arbany. Now, state costume competition doesn't affect your score at all at Miss USA, but it's a huge spotlight on whoever wins that. The judges of the final night, they know who won. Arbany was definitely good enough to win Miss USA. The issue was, there were so many conflicts of interest within the organization that had already been brought up. It was the perfect storm for everything to blow up. When I was a director, the guardrails were much higher, in my opinion, than they are today. I mean, <laughs> to say the Trump years were better regulated is, is hard words to come out of my mouth, but yes. I was not allowed as a director of a state pageant to own a gown shop. I couldn't coach girls. That was considered a conflict of interest. I couldn't be a hair and makeup artist for girls. That was considered a conflict of interest. What shocked me the most when I started really doing my digging was everything I found out about Miss Academy. It just seemed like a huge glaring conflict of interest from the get-go. Prior to taking over Miss USA, Crystal has a business called Miss Academy. 
It was started by her and her husband, Max. The biggest thing that we sell at Miss Academy is confidence. You learn makeup, dining etiquette, hairstyles, communication skills. Once Crystal takes over Miss USA, she does still have Miss Academy under her purview. She made Miss Academy a national sponsor of the Miss USA pageant. Not only were they the official coaching sponsors, but a lot of their team were sponsors in other areas. So if you got the headshot, you took headshots with Grant Photo, who was the official photographer for Miss USA. And he also decides who wins most photogenic. And the people who were teaching classes were the creative directors for the entire pageant. On the finals night of Miss USA, Miss Academy posted on Instagram a list of the 15 girls who had trained at the Academy. Of those 15 girls, eight made the top 16, seven made the top 12, and three made the top five. And of the top five, the winner and the runner-up were both Miss Academy students. We did speak to a lot of directors who said that they did feel pressured to get involved in that business, whether it was to maybe open their own Miss Academy in their states or to funnel prospective contestants to take classes at Miss Academy, there just kind of was this strengthening pipeline between the pageant and the Academy. When Crystal is the head of Miss USA and her pageant school has become the de facto official pageant school, that's a huge win for her profit-wise. And if you can say the last Miss USA was trained at Miss Academy, that's just going to be even more girls coming and saying, this is the school that's going to get me onto that stage. Pageantry is a big business. I know of girls who spend $15,000 just on their state pageant and don't win. Some women compete in pageants for years, invest so much money and time into it, and Competing for Miss USA is like this ultra goal that you have that you look forward to your whole life. And I think so many women felt like they had a wasted investment. We didn't have any sort of third party outlet or HR to go to to really speak to. So I think some of the women's thinking was, well, if I talk in the media, they have to pay attention to me. I'm so proud of my Miss USA sisters in the class of 2022. I don't think it would have been given the same kind of priority, if not for the media. Contestants now questioning it's the legitimacy. It's hard to miss a news post headline, right? The competition was The great. Miss Universe leadership, they reached out and offered to have a meeting with us. On our first Zoom call, it was with Amy Emmerich, the CEO of Miss Universe, and Paula Shugart, the president of Miss Universe. Rather than all of us going in, you know, separately with individual things, we were going to come up with kind of just like an action item list. So that way the meeting was more efficient, our claims were more clear, and we could, you know, reach resolution quicker. Five days after Arbany wins Miss USA, the 2022 contestants receive an email informing them that immediately Crystal Stewart is going to be suspended indefinitely they were launching a third party investigation and that the Holland and Knight law firm was going to take over. Crystal Stewart has been suspended. President of the Miss USA organization says there is no merit to the accusations. The Miss Universe organization reached out and said, we're asking all the judges if they will talk to the third party investigators. Then the Miss USA organization reached out and said, please don't talk to anybody. It wasn't a threat or it wasn't a, anything like that. It was just a, we'd appreciate if you kept your experience to yourself, which to me was just a dumb move on their part because why would you care if we talk to somebody? There's nothing wrong. If there's nothing wrong, there's nothing wrong. accounting firm Ernst & Young. As verified by Mr. Mark Ward of the accounting firm of Ernst & Young. Thank you, Mark. Can you just talk about what is the role of the accounting firm? Like, why are they important? The accounting firm is very important. They're always a third party. As a director or as a pageant staff member, you are never the person who is calculating ballots. That is done by the accountant. That is not even something you want to touch because you don't want any, any notion of impropriety, any, like, whiff. 
then it usually is pretty much written into the script of the accounting firm of, firm of Ernst & Young. Ernst & Young. Accounting firm of Ernst & Young. The accounting firm of EY has tabulated the votes. I don't remember being introduced to them. They didn't talk to me about the ballots. They didn't talk to me about scoring. May I have the results, please? You know, during the telecast, a staff member from the Miss USA office is the person who collected the ballots. There was no accounting firm listed in the credits and couldn't get any confirmation that there were accountants present at all at Miss USA 2022. Miss USA is Texas! It's not a good look. But that doesn't even really begin to describe the issues. There were much larger issues going on at the organization. Nothing I'm about to share to you has been mentioned in the news whatsoever. All of this seems to be an open secret. I feel sick sharing this with you. I am shaking and trying to keep myself together. Here are the 2021 Miss USA contestants. I had such an amazing experience at Miss USA. From competing, rehearsing, laughing with the girls. Michigan, Taylor Hale. I wouldn't change anything about my Miss USA experience because it truly was so much of what I could have asked for. But it's been buried in my memory. I haven't thought about it. I woke up the next morning and I got a direct message from Maxi Rex, the co-owner of Miss USA, married to Crystal Stewart. You know what, let me just pull it up. Can I pull it up and read it? Is that okay? Okay. Hello, Taylor. It was so nice to have you. Well done, Missy. So proud of you. I have the presidential suite for myself. And this is where I just knew there's no world in which a man will invite you to the presidential suite without wanting something in return. Come see the views upstairs if you have a minute. It's spectacular. Of the Tulsa River that was dried up at the time. So then there's a time gap here. I'm off site, I am coming back, and I have this giant <laughs> costume that is wrapped up in plastic, and I'm rolling it through the lobby. And I remember at the corner of my eye, I see Max picking up pace. Max said, don't worry, I got it. Hey, Max. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Not your role, but hey, you know. This is better, even better. I, I can do this. He took the costume to my room with me, and when he put the costume down, he walked all the way inside the room. Made himself very comfortable very quickly. Unfortunately, a lot of women have to experience this, where you have to quickly make a decision. How am I gonna navigate the situation? How am I going to appease this person's ego so that I'm not in danger? He finally stood up and he went to give me a hug. He really pulled me in and he caressed the back of my hair and he whispered in my ear and said, you're so gorgeous. And he kissed my cheek. But it was really the corner of my mouth I kind of weasel my way out of the hug, and I'm thinking, all right, we did it. He's gonna walk out the door. This fucker sits down again, and he kicks his feet up, and he just picks up conversation like nothing happened. I remember texting my two best friends and saying, Max is in my room. And they were terrified for me because we know how this goes down. So finally, I said something joking around, like, okay, well, you need to get the hell out of here because I got to get to work. And I let him hug me. He does the same song and dance, just even more. I said, please just get out. <laughs> I go, ha, 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 close the door. And I remember I just had my hand on the door, and I start laughing to myself, thinking, there's no way that just happened. You're asking to be called out. You're asking to get caught. And when I realized that, I got a gut feeling that I wasn't the only person that he tried this with. As part of this, we have an accusation that this behavior took place even prior to 
to 2021. We have impropriety across media platforms, written content, images, video. We spoke with one contestant and she told us that Crystal did know about all of this that year. I think what's most insidious about all of this is that he did this to women who were competing before the competition even happened. At least my entire experience before standing on that stage is not tainted, wondering whether or not this one guy in power is pulling strings because he wants to fuck me. After the incident with Max in 2021, Taylor ran it up the chain. She told Paula Shugart. I didn't hear anything from Paula or the Miss Universe organization since that phone call. I did receive the same email that everybody else in the Miss USA organization received. Dear 2021 Miss USA state title holders, I would like to make you aware of a structural change within the Miss USA organization. Max Siebrex will no longer serve as the Miss USA organization vice president and will be focusing his efforts on other business ventures. Sincerely, Crystal Stewart. After the 2022 contest, all of these allegations of favoritism and rigging start to become international news. And amidst all of this, the Max story breaks. I had the then co-owner of the organization in my room hitting on me. You expect me to give a fuck about rigging allegations? Please be serious. A beauty pageant is an interesting thing because there's such a power dynamic at play. And when a particular person or a couple owns that pageant and is perceived as having lots and lots of influence, whether or not they can pick the ultimate winner, they could certainly tank a few contestants. That adds a different dimension. I mean, this is an organization that's supposed to empower women. That's not very empowering. It's December 2022, and Paula Shugart sets up a Zoom call with all of the girls that they assume is meant to address the allegations, but ends up just being damage control. It's about the integrity from the moment all of this happened in October. It's about keeping this, uh, making sure that the integrity and any perceptions of uh, impropriety, even during this investigation, that was the thought behind going a third through a third party. Also on the Zoom call, Paula lets all the women know that Holland and Knight has concluded their investigation into the rigging. They told us that there was no foul play in the crowning at Miss USA, but they were still investigating the whole situation. And before they were even finished explaining what the next steps were, the call just shut. That is, is really uh, it on for us on this end. We will get back to you shortly and please continue to send your questions. Did you get to speak during this call? No, we were on mute. The pageants for me are like a way to gain your voice. And what happened on the final call is that it felt like our voice was taken away because we were muted. We are having a very difficult time <laughs> getting current directors to go on the record what's at stake for them. I think for the current directors, they are at risk of losing their livelihood. These people have been directors for 20 plus years, 30 plus years. They want to keep their jobs. We all are just looking for honesty. And when stuff like that happens, you are going to assume the worst because you're wondering What's been going on all this time that I didn't know that before? How do we find ourselves here? It's difficult to understand, uh, to be honest. I didn't know that it would blow up the way that it did and to see all the things that I did be torn down. At 39, she is the youngest owner and the first black woman to take on this major role. I hit the ground running, to be honest, once I took over Miss USA. I was so focused on um, getting the job done and doing a great job for these young women. What kind of support assistance did you get from MUO? 
<laughs> not a lot of assistance. There wasn't a playbook. I took everything um, from scratch and created it myself. Miss USA is Texas! In 2022, what's your story about what happened? There were concerns brought up about favoritism within Miss USA towards Artney, that she had an edge that others didn't have, that she was she favored by. Staff management. No, stay favored by staff. To my recollection, I don't remember that being brought up. Um, but again, these meetings happened pff, over a year ago, so I can't remember everything, but um, we did take notes at every meeting. After uh, the winner was chosen, uh, everything seemed fine. And we've got a, a phone call about a video that was made at Nazook. There was a timestamp of when the video was shot, and it was way before the pageant. She never wore her Texas sash, and she never wore her crown. If you had known that that was happening, would you have thought, oh, maybe this isn't a good move? Mm. I think the way, I think hindsight is always 2020, right? I think at the time, you know, with her going as a model for a sponsor, um, it would have been fine. But looking back, um, there just would have been some guidelines that would have needed to be put in place. Are there any challenges when um, Dr. Nguyen is also a judge at Miss USA? Founder and owner of Mia Beauty, Dr. Fee Wen. He did the costume show, which has no bearing on the final results, but all, all the other judges were sponsors as well. Another thing, so the, the judge form, the conflict of interest form, some judges told us that they actually didn't have to sign one. Mm, no, that's not true. All of them signed one. <laughs> In Reno, in the credit, there's not a specific thing about accounting. Oh, that may actually probably, since it wasn't a specific name, probably actually just a slip up of putting the accounting firm's uh, name. We chose to use accounting firms from the local city that we um, had the pageant at. I forget who we used for both, actually, the accounting firms. But one thing for sure is that we had two accounting firms, one in Tulsa and one in Reno. And actually, you guys know who the accounting firm was? Thank you. Uh, yeah, we, yeah. yeah, we can get it after. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not at all. It wouldn't suck for you. <laughs> mm -hmm. One of your Miss Academy students, or a longtime student, won Miss USA. Mm -hmm. No, it wouldn't suck, but that wasn't the um, intention. But it does show that the training she received at the Academy was of a you know great caliber for her. Did you ever have that sense, like, I wonder if this could be perceived in a way that there's a conflict of interest? Mm -hmm. When I first um, wanted to implement Miss Academy, no, because my thought was in my why of why I was doing it. Okay. Okay. Uh, the Miss Universe organization was very well aware of the school and that I would be sponsoring the pageant, and they knew my intent. There were contestants who said they felt that whole idea about having an edge, mm -hmm. that if they had gone to Miss Academy on their own dime, they would have gotten more face time with you, with staff. How do you respond to that? Um, it's disappointing. It's really disappointing. I'm sorry, I'm not a crier. That's okay. That wasn't the intent. And one of the things that we heard also was that certain directors felt that there was pressure for them to open franchises in their states. So they felt that they were pu pushed or forced to open an academy? Oh, wow. Or, or pressured in some way. Pressured to open a Miss Academy. Not, this is the first time I'm hearing this, not at all. They weren't pressured to open an academy at all. I wanted you to want an academy. If you don't want one, that's completely fine. And that wasn't, a, you know, in the discussions in our meetings at all. Can you walk through, when did you first learn of the allegations against Max? It was in 2021, um, I was made aware in December 
of messages that were sent. Business-wise, that was very clear and cut for me. So um, he stepped down from the organization. Um, that was done, sent out, um, set out new policies, um, spoke to the directors about it, of how we were moving forward. Um, personally, you know, that was difficult. That was difficult. There was a contestant in 2018. Mm -hmm. Obviously, if you had any knowledge of inappropriate behavior before you took on MUSA, mm -hmm. That obviously would be challenging. That would have been challenging for sure. Right. Um, but yeah, <laughs> no, absolutely. If I had knowledge about this, and um, unfortunately, I didn't have knowledge about it. I found out when everyone else found out. Is there anything that you wanted to say that I should have asked you? You know, I want to tell them that. Um, actually commend them for using their voice and coming together because it shows people if you unify and work together how it can amplify your voice um, but they use it for the wrong reason the thing that i really wanted was for things to change in miss usa because miss usa and miss universe is like the house at the top of the hill that every pageant aspires to be. And if they can set a precedent, that'll trickle down to all the state pageants, all the other countries, all different pageant systems. So the entire, I'm looking forward to having the transformational leadership in women. This is why I acquired Miss Universe Organization. In October, 2022, Miss Universe organization sells to a Thai media conglomerate run by Anne Jakra Judadip, a Thai celebrity, a trans woman, and a very successful business person. It's part of my personal life mission to teach, to lead, and to inspire all the women in the universe. And takeover of the pageant represents a couple things. First, the geographical shift to power. Miss Universe's economic centers of gravity are predominantly in Latin America and Southeast Asia. Second, the reassumption of the pageant by a very public figure who understands the media, who understands how to create a brand and how to really kind of spark attention around it. It's so super well known, like Formula One, like Olympic. This is the unique company in its own game. One of the most important things about this program, and why it is so incredibly relevant still, even for Americans, is it's a way of democratizing access to fame and opportunity. We give opportunities to poor kids from any race, any creed, any economic background, if they can hit a ball really well. You might not view beauty as in and of itself meritocratic, but the process of becoming Miss Universe is highly dependent on your work ethic, your skills, and your ability to perform in a true competition. I want to hear it for who your favorite is tonight. Let me hear it, fans. The new Miss Universe is... Gabriel crowned the 71st Miss Universe on Saturday night. Arbany did an amazing job at Miss Universe, and I am so happy that she won. The purpose was never that she was not good enough to win. The issue was always we have a right to feel like we had a fair shot. The investigation concludes, and the organization pretty much closes the book on it. This is not the way you want to run a business if you want to be taken seriously. You have this organization that claims to be about women's empowerment, and then they're really not walking the walk. And it's sort of a wasted opportunity. It has been 70 years that Miss Universe organization ran by men. But now, Tom is up. <laughs> and has announced her intentions to turn this into a true vehicle of women's empowerment and to take the company public. 
so to put the money where its mouth is. We would love to see Miss Universe organization or the competition here to be the new paradigm of women's, in fact, the global women's empowerment platform. Mm -hmm. They want their brand to be viewed as an empowerment platform, but people don't repost somebody giving a speech necessarily about climate activism. I think what it is is that, you know, 70 years of precedent have been set for what audiences and fans of Miss Universe expect. And so I think that's an issue that Miss Universe kind of has to solve. I think we're in a cool moment because now the most powerful women that we see in the culture, specifically after this summer of Taylor Swift era's tour, Beyonce Renaissance and Barbie, we are idolizing women who look just like pageant queens and who embrace their beauty and are presentational with their makeup and their costumes. Barbie is really fascinating in comparison to the Miss Universe organization. It's interesting that a brand like Mattel can be so conscious of the problems and create something out of it that bad images and perceptions don't have to stay bad and that you can create something that's going to become the subject of cultural fascination and obsession out of your legacy. I don't think there's anything wrong with being beautiful. I don't think there's anything wrong with being ambitious. I don't think there's anything wrong with wanting to show off your physical fitness. Women and girls do it every day in a million different ways all over the planet. If we could all change the way that we think about it and talk about it, then women would feel empowered to actually support these pageants and in turn support the women who participate in them. It can be a good thing. It can be an amazing tool that you use to enact positive change and to give someone the training wheels to become the star that they are.